Boston College's biggest surprise of camp is going to be great news for the Eagles this season. You are locked on Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Locked On Boston College. I'm your host, AJ Black. I've been covering this team for over 10 years. I'm here to talk about the Boston College Eagles. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get yourself started. All right. We're going to talk about one of the biggest surprises of the camp today. We're also going to get into the defense who has been holding their own against the offense. I'll explain what that looks like, and we'll get into a little bit of the injury updates. But first of all, thank you all who have made you Locked On BC and your everyday experience. We're going to be doing this and having new episodes every morning. I want to make Locked On BC your morning episode. Uh, radio show, your morning podcast, your first listen every single day. And if you're done with this episode, go check out Locked on ACC as well. And thank you to all our everydayers and our insiders who are part of the Eagles Nest. If you want to join the Eagles Nest, get in in the show notes. So biggest surprise of the camp so far has to be one of the cornerbacks that I just did not expect to be as good as he has been. And that is Catholic Memorial sophomore, Max Tucker. Max Tucker has looked incredible during camp. This weekend alone, I watched him get two interceptions off Thomas Castellanos on Saturday. He made a bunch of plays in the scrimmage, and he looks every bit of an ACC caliber cornerback. Go back to what his recruitment was like. This was a kid that was a last la, an afterthought for Jeff Halfley. I don't think he had any major offers. You brought him in. He comes in last year after Elijah Jones gets uh, pushed pulled off the team for whatever reason that was. He struggles against Miami. You know, when you're going against Xavier Zeppo and some of the uh, wide receivers they have on that squad, totally get it. But he holds his own against SMU and looks tantalizingly good. In that game. Now, you could have watched that game, saw the weather, and said, eh, you know what, AJ? They're playing with SMU's playing with their backup quarterback. It's rainy. You can't throw the football. What I'm telling you, what I watched is a cornerback that is very, um, very good. <laughs> he is tough in terms of his, his, uh, physicality, and he's smart. He makes a lot of great plays. And this has impressed me because I went into the season thinking BC has Amari Jackson. This is the guy that's going to be your shutdown corner. This is the guy that's going to be CB1 and the guy that you're going to re- you rely on when it comes to stopping the pass and getting your defense going. I looked at cornerback number two as a positional battle going into camp. You know, you had two transfers you brought in that it looked like would be battling for that spot. Ryan Turner, who during spring ball looked every bit like that would be his, his position and bright Brown. If you play NCAA 25, that's, that's your quarterback number two there. But I'm telling you right now, there's no, there's no comparison. It's Max Tucker right now. He, he's going to be an exciting player. And, what I loved about him too is he's playing and he, he gets into it with Jaden Skeet a lot. Cause those two know each other from when they were younger. I, I think Jaden said since they were 10, he gets into it. He, he talks good cornerbacks talk. That's, that's part of the game, right? I talked to Bill O'Brien after practice on Saturday and he was glowing in what he had to say about Tucker. And I want to read you his full quote because I think it really gives you a, a, a full experience. It says, I like how he approaches the game, said O'Brien. This is the type of guy we want to recruit at Boston College every year I'm here. This is what we're looking for. He's a Boston guy. He's a tough guy, a competitive guy, very smart guy. He does everything the right way, never misses class, on time, all the time. Really what it's all about at BC. 
And this is everything I've heard. I've talked to multiple different people and they are singing the praises of Max Tucker. And when we get into our second segment, and I'll get into that in a little bit, you hear why this is going to be so important. When you have a kid out there who's just scratching the surface of what he's capable of doing. Remember, this kid's only started two games. He is going to be a problem. He's a problem in practice right now. And I think BC has good wide receivers. He makes them look standard when he goes up against them. Uh, he, you know, he, he, I've loved the way he's played man coverage, the way he runs deep routes, uh, along with the wide receivers, he is doing it all. And to hear his coaching staff say what they said. And remember, if you remember what Max Tucker said at the beginning of spring ball, this is the perfect representative of Boston College, but to see him do it on the field too is also exciting. Remember, he's the perfect representative. He's the kid that they used that clip of when he was telling kids in Massachusetts, you got to come play at Boston College. You got to come here and you got to play here. And he, it was something that they were using for recruiting. He's got a younger brother, Jackson Tucker. I I, I think he has a younger brother coming too. Uh, not, not, not committed, but I believe he has one uh, at Catholic Memorial. Um, I think there's a younger sibling coming. Uh, but this is a kid, you know, there's a huge future ahead for Max Tucker right now for a position that you had last year, where it was a major problem when you had, you know, games where BC was just getting scorched through the air. You now have two good defensive backs. I think Amari Jackson's going to really come into his own. And then you pair him up with Tucker. I like the way that the secondary is coming together. It's going to be competitive. And you're playing against a Florida State team that doesn't have the wide receiver depth that you expect Florida State to have. This group could sneakily be good enough to, to, to slow down the Florida State passing game. I, you know, you look at what BC needs to do this season. They got to play some good quarterbacks. You know, the ACC is the court, the the conference of quarterbacks. We've heard that over and over again. To 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 con to con, uh, combat that, you need a good secondary. You need guys like Max Tucker to step up, and he's the biggest surprise. I had no idea he was going to be this good, and I. There's people on Eagle Insider that were there for the Gridiron Club on Saturday that watched too and said, "Wow, what does BC have there? This is got this is a kid that's going to be special this year. He's going to make plays and he's going to be impressive. And 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 to add on to all that, he's a lo- as as O'Brien said in that quote I read you, he's a local kid. He's a kid that is from Boston. This is a perfect guy to build your defense around. Um, and BC has one of the biggest surprises I think right now and one that none of the national guys are going to talk about until they see him play. Um, And I think they're going to be very surprised what he can do now in a moment, I'm going to keep with the defense because I want to talk a little bit about what happened over camp this weekend where I watched the defense beat up on the offense quite a bit. I'll explain what that was like in just a moment. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. Just get over to FanDuel. There's all sorts of preseason football spreads if you're into that kind of stuff. They have prop bets for different players. The 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 sky's the limit when you head over to FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sports book. This is Locked On Boston College, AJ Black. Yo. If you're done listening to this episode, I want you to t- I want you to get into locked on Knowles. Get yourself an, another perspective of what's coming up in that first game. They're talking a little bit about George Tech, but you'll get yourself you'll you'll learn a little bit when you t- check out Locked On Knowles on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. And I also want to spend a special shout out to my Eagles nesters. These are my insiders who have joined 
our subtext program. I've been sending videos. I'm going to send a special Q&A video to them uh, for the questions that they've asked me about practice. You get texts every day from me. You get all the insider information. Join up wherever you get, you know, join up. It's in the show notes. So this weekend, I got to a couple practices and watched on Friday and Saturday how the team is looking. And my biggest takeaway from practice is the play of this defense. The defense, especially on Saturday, looked especially strong. The defense on Saturday, I don't want to undersell this. They they beat up the offense quite a bit. Thomas Castellanos had a tough game, a tough, tough, tough practice. And, you know, sometimes they could be just he's trying to throw the ball into tighter windows than he would in a game. They're not letting him run as much. You know, there's a whole bunch of factors that are into it. I do not read into this as Thomas Castellanos is bad. Please do not leave this conversation thinking that. I'm just saying I watch the defense make a ton of plays. I already told you about Max Tucker having two interceptions. Amari Jackson had an interception. Donovan Azaraku had a pick six when he intercepted a screen pass and took it to the, to the house. Neto Paula had at least three sacks and um, a run stuff. All of this in one um, practice se- session. This is all during the different uh, periods that they were playing, so it wasn't all one thing. But the offense just could not get anything going. The big concern I would have about the offense was the wide receivers, who most of them were there. Jaden Skeet was not practicing. He's back. He came back today. They had trouble getting open against that secondary. And I don't know if that's going to be a problem this season. We'll have to watch more of the practices. Um, they just The defense just did a great job jamming them up. But what I'm saying here is I watched. Neto Apollo looks like a completely different player this year. Um, Bill, Bill O'Brien uh, praised him after practicing. He's learning a lot more about the position and is much more refined in his role as an edge rusher, you know, setting the edge and doing all that good stuff. It's very clear watching him that Neto Ekpala is going to be a much more efficient defensive edge for Boston College than we've seen over the last couple of years. The Neto Ekpala that you were hoping for, I feel like is going to be activated this year. He looks like he know, like he looks like a different player out there. And then you add in Donovan Azaraku, who has been playing like his hair's on fire all spring. I mean, this guy is like, he. if you ever watched him talk, he's a very like just chill guy. But watching him on the field, he's like a maniac out there uh, with the energy that he brings. And that's helping this defense. Like, it really helps the defense. It's a good, it's a good manic energy. But that's what you see when he plays out there. And he makes plays. He's making a lot of plays. A lot of these guys are making a lot of plays out there. Um, and I think they, you know, the fact that they're doing this against an offense that should look pretty good is is encouraging. If I was watching, you know, the the offense just carve them up over and over again, I'd be like, okay, this defense isn't for a tough year. But I've watched guys. I've been at practice ten times, eight times so far this this summer. I've sat through. If it's eight times, I've been there for sixteen to eighteen hours of practice. I've this defense consistently plays well. They don't get beat a lot. Um, and it, it, the, the depth I think is impressive too. There's some guys that you're going to start to see pop up that you're not talking about right now. The big name I want to mention right here, said McConnell, this, this transfer from Illinois, I talked to Bill O'Brien about it on Saturday. Um, he said when he came in, he didn't, he wasn't sure like what he was going to get with this kid. He just it didn't seem like he would be all that effective. And he has changed a ton in four months. So if you watched him during the spring game, you're like, eh, you know, maybe he's not going to be all that great. Even O'Brien saying this guy has transformed and played at a much higher level now than he did then. And it is again, his play at practice. He's starting to to eke in with the ones. He's starting to to make you know make big plays. He has sacks. I've seen him make run stuffs. This is a kid that's going to play a lot. Um, and I don't know how they're going to use him uh, right now. I'm guessing more in sub packages. And I'm pass. I'm thinking pass. You know, he's probably going to play the same spot as George Rooks. Rooks will probably be your your run defender. And I'm guessing they're going to use McConnell for more of the passing downs. Uh, but he's out there a lot, and he's making a lot of plays. So that th- that's a, a couple things that you're seeing here. You know, am I worried about the offense? No. 
and I'll explain why in a little bit. They're <laughs> they were playing with two scholarship running backs when I watched that practice. That was it. And no, they're not all like severely injured. They had guys just sitting out. Uh, but they were playing at uh, you know, uh, you know, they were behind the eight ball a little bit in terms of their depth. They were playing a lot of Anthony Ferrucci out there. That could have been an impact. And you have to know if you watch enough football, if you watch enough practice, there's going to be days the offense kicks the defense's butt. There's going to be de- team days the defense kicks the offense's butt. I've seen both. I've seen the offense do some things. I've seen the defense do some things. It was just this weekend, specifically the defense was on their game. They were they were fun to watch. They were fired up. I mean, gosh, Ray Brown, their defensive backs coach, and uh, all the players on the sideline, they were screaming and hollering as they should because they played very very well. And so I hope that this is not just a practice thing. And this is, we see this transform into the, the, the regular season, but from what I'm watching this, this defense could be sneaky. Good in our final segment. I want to talk about where the injuries are at. Who's out. What's what, what do we know so far in terms? And is there anything to be concerned about? We'll get into all of that in just a moment. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performances. With superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Available only to U.S. customers. Locked on Boston College, AJ Black here. Uh, Thank you all who have made us your first listen. And if you have not done so already, please like and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. We're going to be your daily morning Boston College podcast. We'll give you news. We'll give you updates. Get all of that good stuff from us, from insiders that know what we're talking about. Speaking of that, let's get into injuries. Um, So just to preface this conversation, to be completely upfront, the staff will never acknowledge, like, unless you can ask them, but they're not going to tell you details about an injury. So if you're asking me, like, what's going on, like, with a certain player, I couldn't tell you. And I and I really shouldn't because there it's, it's right now it's private practice information. I can tell you guys who have missed practice. That's what I'm going to tell you today. We know that Logan Taylor has been dealing, dealing with a foot injury. They've talked about that. He's been in a boot. We know that piece. Hopefully he's going to be back soon. The whole, you know, at the beginning of practice, um, at the very beginning, Bill O'Brien gave it about a week. Um, I've heard that hopefully it should be sooner, um, that that he should be coming back soon. That would be big because you can't go without that guard. You need to have a guard um, that knows what he's doing, that is going to be able to to protect against a really uh, strong Florida State defense. So I think that will be one that's really key. The, the one that worried me and it happened last week was the injury to Turbo Richard. In the scrimmage, he got blown up on a screen, uh, like a swing screen pass um, that the, Grayson James did him no favors because he let him right into a linebacker who just like video game hit him. Um, and he went down. Um, and he has not practiced since. And I, I don't, I for, from the buzz I've heard, I don't think he's going to be out that long. Um, hopefully it won't be that big of a deal because the running back room, Dottrell Jones is also out. He got hurt at a practice last week. Um, and it's, it was thin. As I said, when I watched on Saturday, the two running backs that they had on scholarship was Jordan McDonald and Trey Sean Ward. Kai Robichaux has missed the last two practice. Again, Bill O'Brien has said a lot of guys it's, it, we're in the midst of practice right now. It's a lot of maintenance type of stuff. I think guys are getting dinged up. Guys are getting bruised. They want to keep them fresh. So you, we saw like Jerron Bradley miss a couple of days. He's already back. Jaden Skeet missed a couple of days. He's already back. I imagine Robichaux will be back soon too. So nothing like you've seen a couple injuries. Jones, I think could be bigger. Um, but like most of the guys, I feel like it's been dinged up. I think Tur- Turbo Richard will be back soon too. And he really should be because he's really good. Um, Matt Reagan 
their tight end, their third string tight end has been in a no contact uh, Jersey. He hopefully should be back. I mean, if he's in a no contact, that means he should be back soon. Um, so they're not a t- like, I don't want you guys to think like there's a ton of injuries. Uh, Cause it really isn't. They've, they've done a good job. I think of keeping guys healthy. You've seen guys just take practices off. Like Grayson James, the last two practices hasn't practiced. Um, and they've had a lot of Jacoby Robinson playing it too. Don't read anything into that. I don't think James is hurt. I just think they're just giving him some time off. That's just the way it is when you have 20 practices in like three weeks or whatever it is. You know what I mean? So they're just working it. And I think the team is okay right now. I think the team is, is managing the injuries. I don't think there's going to be any surprises. And honestly, that's the great part of all of this. At the end of the day, at least now we know <laughs> when guys are out. Remember when Jeff Halfley ran the the media friendly coach that everyone thought he was the media knew nothing myself included on injuries because he never would talk about it you couldn't watch practice so it was all a mystery and it did us all no favors because then you'd watch like the start of the season and all of a sudden this guy that you thought was starting wasn't there because no one knew about it at least bill o'brien is being up front and saying like here's what's going on these guys have missed some practices. And again, I'm not telling you what the injuries are. I don't know. Um, other than I, I watched Turbo Richards get blown up. I don't know what the other injuries are. But I can tell you that most of the guys that you're expecting to play are there. They're they're practicing. Um, and they've just given some guys some time off. And so Bill O'Brien, who has more of the reputation of being like the tougher old school coach, he, is, I'm going to tell you right now, he is much more... Um, the, from a media perspective, I appreciate him a million times more than halfway because I know what's going on with the program. I can tell you what I've seen with halfway. It was all mystery. This is great. So this is why I love doing episodes like this, because I can tell you what I watched at camp. I'm not going to tell you what the, the, um, the specific, you know, formations they're doing. Cause I can't, but I can tell you who's having good practices. I can tell you who sat out. I can tell you what groups are standing out. That's what makes this more interesting. And that's what makes more people want to hear more about Boston College. And it opens up the program a little bit more. So this is why I wanted to bring this up, because I think it's important to know. All right. On tomorrow's episode, we will be at Media Day. I'll give you some updates on anything that's popping up with Boston College. We'll be back to talk more about the Eagles as it's less than two weeks from tomorrow to the start of the season in Tallahassee. Can't wait to get to that. Thank you all. Follow me on Twitter at AJBlack247. Join our Eagle Insider subtext right now. We only have a few more uh, free promos left um, that'll get you covered for the whole season. I'm about to put out a video. So if you have, if you have signed up right now, get in now. And we'll be back again tomorrow for another episode of Locked On Boston College, your team every day.